Trifles by Susan Glaspell, one of my very favorite plays of all time. Susan Glaspell was born in 1876. She died in 1948. She was born in Davenport, Iowa. And Trifles was inspired by her experiences as a courtroom reporter during a murder trial in 1900. While living and writing in Iowa, Glaspell met George Cram Cook, the man who would become her husband. Both Cram and Susan wanted to rebel from their conservative upbringing. They met in a socialist society during a time when Cook had divorced for a second time and longed to experience a rural commune lifestyle. However, his series of divorce conflicted with the traditional values of Iowa. Thus, the newly married couple moved to Greenwich Village. According to the Greenwich Village Bookshop Door, Cook and Glassbull were the creative force behind a new style of American theater. In 1916, Glassville and a group of writers, actors, and artists co-founded the Provincetown Players. Both Glassville and her husband, as well as other drama icons such as Eugene O'Neill, created plays that experimented with both realism and satire. Eventually, the Provincetown Players gained great fame and economic success, which according to Cook, led to disagreements and disenchantment. So, mo money, mo problems. And evidently that held true for the Provincetown players. Glaspell and her husband left the players. They were much disillusioned by the fame, so they decided to travel to Greece in 1922. Her husband, shortly after achieving his lifelong dream to become a shepherd, died two years later. So, they moved to Greece to be shepherds and wear this awesome outfit that George Cram Cook has on. Well worth the move. Glassville returned to America in 1924 and continued to write. Her work focused more on her best-selling novels, but also included a Pulitzer Prize winning play, Allison's House. So, let's talk about Trifles, the play itself. We have a character list. We have George Henderson, the county attorney, Henry Peters, local sheriff and husband of Miss Peters, Lewis Hell, Miss Peters, Miss Hell, John Wright, who is the murdered man and owner of the house, and Miss Minnie Wright, John Wright's wife and his suspected murderer. So what we have here is the definition of trifles, and there are five different definitions. And as we talk about the play and we read the play, we're going to look at each of these, and each one of these particular definitions work perfectly with the plot and theme. Within the play Trifles, we are presented with a dramatic question. Through the first two-thirds of Trifles, the dramatic question is, will Minnie's motive in killing her husband be discovered? Well, this dramatic question is answered when the canary is found. However, after that dramatic question is answered, a new one arises. Having discovered Minnie's motives, will the women reveal it to the lawmen? When we analyze this play, one interesting thought that perhaps the reader is beginning to ponder is this. While the men importantly bumble about trying to discover a motive, Mrs. Peters and Mrs. Hell solve the case right under their noses. As our women are in the kitchen and collecting Miss Minnie Wright's things, they ultimately discover the motive for the murder. But of course the men are in the barn and they're looking for weapons. And So as the women are gathering Minnie Wright's things, they happen upon the motive. Now, once they discover the canary, the two women began 
to realize painful truths about their own lives. At first, they feel no connection to many right, but when they find the canary and when they begin to examine things that have occurred within their lifetime, they realize and become aware that they do have a significant amount in common with Miss Minnie Wright. Now, ultimately, these two women resolve to side with the accused, with Minnie Wright, and they do this against the men, and they do hide the evidence. So, themes and conflicts in our play trifles. The first is gender differences. For example, women who men say worry over trifles can find large meaning in those little things, which is exactly what the women did. Um, at the beginning, the men are looking for a weapon. They go into the barn. They're, they're looking at the, um, the body of Mr. Wright. However, the women are in the kitchen, and the men have described, oh, these women speak about trifles. They, they just, you know, talk about little things, things of insignificant matters like sewing. However, in the sewing basket was the motive for murder. So, another interesting theme is that it can be argued that because these women initially did not realize how much they had in common, that they did not unify and support each other. Within the play, we have our ladies lamenting the fact that they never came and visited Minnie Wright, that they never they never gave her company, that um, Mr. Wright was a hard man to live with, and that they should have supported her. Justice. Justice is another important theme. Because Trifles is a murder mystery in which Miss Hells and Miss Peters decide to hide the evidence of the crime and thus end by aiding the murderer, the play leaves open the question of the meaning of duty and justice. Because duty and justice mean two very different things. For men such as George Henderson and Henry Peters, the concept of law and order is intricately linked with duty and justice. And at first, the reader sees how Miss Peters ascribes to the same interpretation. However, whenever she remembers the loss of her child, her position changes. Domesticity. When Henderson observes the Wright's kitchen, he concludes that Miss Wright must not have the homemaking instinct. And you'll notice within the play, Miss Hill interprets that as an attack on Miss Wright, and she becomes very upset about that. The home is um, sort of the defining measure of what type of woman you are within this play, and Miss Henderson begins to observe that that is intricately incorrect, and that should not play a factor in Miss Minnie Wright's um, worth. Loneliness and isolation. We learn within the play that John Wright was a hard man to live with, and he did not provide the companionship needed. Miss um, Hell blames herself for never having visited Miss Wright, and both women suspect that the canary had been a substitute for Miss Wright's lack of children and friends. Miss um, Peters recalls her solitude while she was homesteading in Dakota and remembers um, the loneliness is part of the female and human condition. Miss Peters and Miss Hell, once they discover the dead canary in the sewing basket, they realize that the murder of her husband did not result solely from her unhappiness in her marriage, but from an enforced return to solitude by killing of her bird. That bird was company, as any of our animals are company to us. And so once Mr. Wright killed the animal, she was then thrown back into a state of loneliness and isolation. Revenge. Miss Wright killed her spouse because she could think of no more fitting revenge than to inflict damage in kind to the perpetrator. Notice that the little canary's neck was broken, much like Mr. Wright's neck was broken upstairs. It's very symbolic. Um, the realization catalyzes Miss Peter's sense of empathy as she recalls having had similar feelings many years ago when a boy killed her kitten. 
For these women, the pain that results from the death of a loved one is so great that it deserves any punishment necessary. And ultimately, these women absolve Minnie Wright of her crime because they truly do believe that Mr. Wright deserved this punishment. Nevertheless, the play leaves open the question of whether Ms. Wright will still be convicted without the evidence. And similarly, we must decide for ourselves if revenge is a sufficient motive for murder. Many of us would argue that it's not. Some of us would argue that it is. So, plot. By telling of events in retrospect, by having the women piece together what happened, Glaspell leads us to focus not only on the murder, but more importantly on the developing bond between the two women and their growing compassion for the accused. That's interesting to note because the body of Mr. Wright is often off stage. So it's not the focal point. Generally, when there's been a gruesome murder, the murdered body tends to be up front and very visual. Um, but Susan Glaspell doesn't do that because the play is really not about a murdered man. The play is about the developing bond between Mrs. Peters and Mrs. Hell. Protagonist. Arguably, both women could be considered protagonists. Um... A few things to consider. It is Miss Hell who destroys the wild stitching in the quilt, who finds the dead canary, and who invents the story of the cat thus deceiving the county attorney, and who, after Miss Peters goes to pieces, takes initiative and hides the evidence in her coat pocket. Now, that is definitely a protagonist. However, let's go back for a moment. However, Miss Peters, we see her as a fully developed character. She begins as, in quotations, married to the law. But as we see her remember her um, past experiences and loneliness and um, how hard it is to be the wife of a farmer, she comes full circle. So... It's interesting to sort of decide, you know, both of these women could arguably be the protagonist. So, this is a question that we ask ourselves. Is this accurate? Trifle suggests that men tend to be aggressive, brash, rough, analytical, and self-centered. In contrast, women are more circumspect, deliberative, intuitive, and sensitive to the needs of others. It is these differences that allow Miss Peters and Miss Hell to find the clues needed to solve the crime while their husbands miss the same clues. Now, this is an incredibly broad statement. And several people and myself would argue with this, that it's not all men, that we cannot lump um, people into their specific um, gender roles, right? However, in this play, we do see gender roles being very defined by Glaspell. Men behave this way. Females behave this way. Now, we have to think about the time that this play was written. So, I don't know. It's an interesting question. It's definitely something to have a conversation about.